So uh, the official word is that this treaty goes into effect today at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. And across the country and across the world, people are asked to ring bells at 12 noon. <coughs> so please get your bells out. How, how close are we? 11.58, so we have two minutes, so start getting, and we'll tell you when it's noon, and we'll start really ringing the bells, and I think banging the drums would be good, too. Oh, it's 12. Okay, 12 noon, ring those bells. I just have to mention the name Sally Breen. This was what she spent her life for. Even from her hospital bed, she would call Senator Collins around this issue. So I just want us all to hold Sally in our hearts today because this is, this is her day. Thank you. Hello, brothers and sisters. It's a wonderful day to save the world. Woo! Come on now. Uh, all right, that's not bad for everybody that's been inside for, what, 10 months now? Everybody hanging in there? Spring's coming. Anyway, my first arrest was at the Nevada test site, which is now, well, they changed the name to the Nevada Nuclear security site, N-N-S-S. -S. But anyway, that's back when Wackenhut, anybody remember Wackenhut? Wackenhut, the security cops, they were the ones that were in charge. And one day we decided to charge for Mercury. Probably about 24 of us started running across the line towards Mercury, one by one. The weak, the elderly, the little children were tackled first and taken away in jeeps, had cuffs put on their hands, were held in outdoor pens, and finally it was me and a friend who had an agreement. If one of us got caught, the other would stop and observe because anything could happen out in the desert with whacking huts. Well, I tried to go through two cops, didn't make it. One hit me high, one hit me low. They got the tough cuffs on, put us in the back of these, oh, I don't know, ORVs, took us to a holding pen, and then they bust us all up to Beatty, and then they let us go. Been fighting it ever since. Somebody else wants the bike, come take it here, or I can keep going. How important this is. I've talked to these nuclear scientists. I've looked them in the eye and said, why are you devoting your education, your experience, your expertise, your intelligence to destroying the earth when you could be doing some other kind of job. And they just look at me, because Los Malamos Laboratories is full of these nuclear knuckleheads who are causing a nuclear nightmare. <laughs> keep up the work, keep up the struggle. This is a great day, and we need to get Biden and the USA to get on board. Let me hear it one time for that. Yo, come on, Biden. Thank you, peace. Hello everyone. Hello. It's a good day to be here as always. It's nice and warm. It's not snowing, so that's good. <clears throat> I want to talk about a couple of things here today. Uh, first, I want to mention that the, we, we sent a letter to the free press asking them to advertise about this <clears throat> gathering here today. And uh, we, we sent them a letter and in, they added to the letter that this was a peaceful protest. And I would like to point out that this is not a peaceful situation or a peaceful protest because <clears throat> we have come here in peace. We are all peaceful. I'm not saying this because any of us are planning any of the things that the government has described as violent tactics used by protesters over the last few months. <clears throat> but the other side is not, not doing that. Over there, and behind us are paid security, private security guards of General Dynamics. They are armed. None of us are armed. If we were armed, likely we'd be arrested and dragged out of here. 
and we'd be compared to the people who stormed the Capitol. But we're not like that, but the other side is. On the other side of this building here are massive warships that go around the world protecting American interests, American hegemony. They occupy entire nations and they keep the world <clears throat> from becoming peaceful. So it's also important to acknowledge that we are standing on land that was stolen from indigenous people. And here we are celebrating a treaty and you are doing it in a country that has violated every treaty that it ever signed with indigenous people. So we know that this, this treaty is not <clears throat> the end of this fight. It's just, you know, a milestone in it. And we know that it won't be the UN that'll stop nuclear weapons. It'll be the people coming together saying, we're tired of this. We're tired of living in fear. We're tired of living with the end of the world at the fingertips of crazy old men. Martin Luther King, whose legacy has been distorted over and over by pretty much every politician, called the United States the greatest purveyor of violence in the world. He said that in 1967. And it, it remains true today. We spend 60% of discretionary funding on war. That doesn't even count what we spend on the police. It doesn't even count what we spend, you know, on prisons. <clears throat> this, is, this is where our priorities are as a nation. And we wonder why people are starving, why our education system is failing, why we don't have health care for everyone, especially during a pandemic. And the answer is that we have funded war and violence. We have funded white supremacy, but we have not, we have not, we have not come to terms with this as a nation. And we need to, if we want to have a chance at a future. Now, I'm looking around here and I see a lot of older people and I'm very grateful, you know, as always, I've been coming here since I was one years old and I see a lot of older people. <clears throat> but this, this fight, this reality of, of the genocidal reality of nuclear weapons, this is going to continue on in my generation. It is the climate emergency. This nuclear weapons pose the single greatest threat to the climate and to human, the human ecology that it could possibly. And we have to understand that these weapons are not an accident. They serve a purpose. They serve the purpose of keeping things the way they are. But the way things are is not working for the majority of people. All around the world, there are people struggling and starving. All around the world, we have failed to create uh, institutions that value human life. And we need to stop. We need to abolish nuclear weapons. We need to confront not just that there are nuclear weapons, but the reason why there are nuclear weapons. There's one country in the history of the world that has ever used nuclear bombs on people, and that's this country, the most violent, hideous country in the world. You know, this country doesn't care about freedom or democracy. If that was true, we wouldn't have 2.3 million people in prison. But it's time for us to confront the fact that today, even today, this gathering, and I said that everyone, you know, majority of people here are, are elderly. And yet the government still looks at this as a threat. I, there's an armed, armed guard over here who has no accountability to anything. He just works for General Dynamics. He's a paid goon, essentially. He tells me that he owns the tree here, so I can't tie up the sign to point out the fact that there's a treaty agreed to by the United Nations, saying that what they do here is wrong. That our reliance, our addiction to war and militarism, 60% of the discretionary spending, what they do in here is they plan for death. We need to make a plan for life. We need to try to, try to build institutions that will protect our communities. Today is, is also... Today, January 22nd, also is an important day because it marks a day. Um, <clears throat> it's the International Day of Action for Transgender Prisoners. And one of my, one of my closest friends uh, is, a, is a transgender prisoner um, who is incarcerated because of the war on terror, because of what is going on behind these walls. And 
she and I started a, a, a prison journalism project where we would um, <clears throat> share accounts of abuses that take place in the prison system. And because of that, the federal government has decided that she and I can no longer talk to each other anymore. So I haven't spoken to her since August, and I haven't been able to write even a letter to her since October. And it's not even really safe for me to say her name right now. And this is violent. This is a violent situation that I live in every day because of that. So this is not a peaceful protest. We do not have peace. We came here to create peace. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm going to read. I'm going to read from a letter written by Ardith Platty, who was one of the um, organizers that helped to get this uh, ratified by all the nations. Um, she was part of the ICANN organization that um, was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Um, and she wrote this in 2009. Um, I keep hoping for the abolition of nuclear and all weapons for an end to, to all war and the desperation they cause. I hope it will be in my lifetime. I hope we learn from the, from the word and from the collapse of the economy that it has caused. Um. It is time to keep up, no, it is time to wake up to the violences, but I do not count on the results nor the success before I die. She recently died in um, September, and I hope that my generation will continue this message of abolishing nuclear weapons abolishing war and abolishing violence of all forms within my lifetime um, and continue to try and not expect results but to continue to live in a way that um, warrants those results. So I'll hope for that, pray for that. I'd just like to, I'd just like to add a little bit to that. Um, Ardith was my godmother, and she's a very wonderful and holy woman who is absolutely here with us in spirit, and her presence is just here. It's not necessarily just a spirit. Um, you know, our presence here is part of her presence in the world. And uh, I'd just like to acknowledge some of the history of Ardith. You know, she was a plowshares activist and was repeatedly in incarcerated, you know, for, for exposing and trying to call for nuclear abolition. And, you know, she's considered to be a terrorist by this government that we, that we elected, you know. And, 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 you know, the Plowshares activists at the most recent action just gone to jail again. You know, and you don't see Biden making any statement about that. So we don't live in a democracy if we have political prisoners. We don't live in a democracy when someone like Ardith would go to prison Yeah, we, and we don't live in a democracy where we have people detained unlawfully without any, any laws like at Guantanamo. So yeah, that's, but I just really think we can acknowledge the, the presence of, of people like Ardith and, and all the people who have been calling for nuclear abolition um, from even before there were nuclear bombs. So I know that she's here with us today. Um, so, you know, that's a really, they say, there's a, they say that we stand on the shoulders of giants and I think, I think if, if that's true, then we're certainly standing on Ardith's shoulders because she certainly was a giant in this movement to abolish nuclear weapons because of just how much she gave, um, you know, she gave up from herself, you know, whatever she could give, whether it was her, her time, her prayers, you know, even her body, she gave to fighting for the abolition of nuclear weapons. And that's what we're doing here today. And it's really, really a beautiful thing. I'm Rosalie Paul. I live in, in um, Brunswick, Maine. And um, I guess I'm here to speak to the people that think we're odd and how silly to have to be here on a day like this when we have a brand new administration and everything's going to be fine. Well, I think too many of us went back to sleep on Wednesday. 
I think, um, I think we need to get awake and stay awake to the incredible dangers to our planet. Um, and the ships that are built here, built by good people, but they're nuclear armed ships. Those weapons don't, those weapons aren't installed here. They're installed after the ship leaves the Kennebec River, at least that's my understanding. But armed they are, and a danger to the entire world. We have an opportunity to speak up to our elected representatives about this particular nuclear ban. Clearly, the big nine, those are the nuclear weapons manufacturing company, countries, um, at this point have no intention of signing and ratifying that ban because they'd have to stop making nuclear weapons. But they are being watched and they are not admired by the 51 countries that have signed it and where it is now today illegal to make or sell or uh, maintain any part of a nuclear weapon that I hope will be a nuisance to the United States and other countries who may depend on those uh, 51 for some manufacturing or some offshore or something bad. Um, we just need to be watching and paying attention and not accepting what the media tells us um, is American exceptionalism because it's not. I guess I think we have an opportunity with this new administration. Just because it's new and because people are paying attention for a little bit. So we're shining a little bit of a light on the nuclear weapons issue with this ban. And we see that some of our leaders, too many of our leaders, are in love with the chess game of world domination. They can't see beyond that. Everything is uh, looked at through that lens. And they lead us with muscular power. Muscular power is not sustainable. Others of our leaders may have kinder hearts and would like to lead us from the heart with spirit power, which is the only way forward to the seventh generation. But those leaders, having come to power with corporate dollars, are not free, but must obey. So I want to quote our young 22-year-old poet laureate who was so wonderful on Wednesday. And I think if people really pay attention to her words, they will see that she was speaking a lot of truth to power. As she closed her poem, she said, and I hope we'll pay close attention and be the we that she speaks of. The new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light. If only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Thanks. So again, we're inviting anyone who wants to come and speak to do so. I want to make another acknowledgement right now um, that the folks from the plowshare people that are in jail right now that we also need to be honoring for all that they've done and sacrificed. And somebody is going to speak about that. Thank you. Good morning. Or I guess we're in the afternoon. Okay, well, 
we just want to speak about um, Steve Kelly, who's already done 33 months in the uh, jail in Georgia, has been transferred to to a uh, holding pen in in Oklahoma, and he's being moved to um, Tacoma, Washington, to be resentenced for an, a different plowshares action because he violated the probation doing this doing the second one in Georgia. He acted at the at the uh, Kings Bay Naval Station in in uh, St. Mary, Georgia, um, outside of Brunswick. The other people in prison are Claire Grady is going in next week, but um, in between that we have um, Martha Hennessy is in jail at Danbury, Connecticut, and um, Carmen Trotta is up in um, New York State in Otisville, um, and Patrick O'Neill is now in prison in Ohio. Um, each of them have over a year to serve in prison for their um, for their witness. Okay, there's people. The plowshares movement has continued to act here at Bath Ironworks. Um, there were two plowshares actions here. One was in 1991, and one was in 1996. And um, after the one six. Jorgen, my son, before was speaking, and he spoke about Ardeth Platty. She came up here for three months and organized around the trial in 96 and 97 for, for the Plowshares people. And they, uh, she put on the Festival of Hope, and she vigiled both here and down in Portland at their, at their place. And I'd like to read a, a, a segment of, of a letter that she sent to me. She sent, we were a very, close communication for many years. And um, this year, or in March, or June of last year, she wrote this. It all seems endless when it comes to wars and weapons. But I know there is a new day coming. So many more people are speaking out, withdrawing support from and growing stronger against violence and death dealing. It is evident that killing, war, and violence, economic disparity, environmental destruction, exclusion through walls, patriarchy, nationalism, gender, etc., are not part of our love and faith. It seems important to us to remember Phil Berrigan's message. Do not look for results, successes, immediate victories, wins, etc., but to be faithful to truth-telling, that truth-telling is done with love, in nonviolent actions, in a spirit of hope. And I believe that's what we're doing here today. We are doing truth-telling. We're standing here speaking the truth and trying to awaken hearts and minds that nuclear weapons are immoral and now they are illegal. And we need to get rid of them so our children and grandchildren and the world can live in peace and harmony. These weapons are a plague and a horror on our lives, and they need to be eliminated. Thank you very much. I just, I just feel called to share with you something that Martin Luther King said that really went to my heart. This is before the people broke into our, you know, the, our government, and, um, and it's something that I, I hope can lead us to a better life together without the um, um, just the huge chasm that exists between certain extremes in our country and bring us back together. But he said, we must learn to live together as brothers or we shall all die together as fools. And boy, does that ever you know, tie into what we're here today to address, which is the you know an incredibly obscene threat of nuclear devastation for all of us. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, it's so good to have a community that gets together and carries you know carries this message forward, and we're we're not going to stop. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yep. Is it work? I just, this is personal for me. 
I don't know how old I was when I first learned that war was not a good thing in my childhood, but it feels like it goes way, 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 way back. And I probably did do some protesting even then I'd, under whatever direction from my parents. I don't know. When my children were two, four, six, and eight, we took them to Washington, D.C. to protest Vietnam going on, and that continued. And I don't come to all the protests up here, but it means a lot to me. I was extremely excited when they introduced this ban. <laughs> I was extremely excited when that was introduced to the United Nations and when the ICANN group, I watched every minute of their getting the uh, Nobel Peace Prize and it's going on. And today is the day that really, really, really matters. So we keep going. I just want to affirm it. It's very personal to me.